next tenet is picking the right soil, which in this case is actually soilless and is really more of a growing media. My recommendation for first time gardeners or those with limited space is to buy pre-mixed bags that are labeled for use in containers or raised beds. And the reason for this is that those mixes are designed to meet the specific needs of a container garden. That is, they hold onto water really well and the soil composition is light and fluffy, which means that it won't compact and your roots will be able to grow freely. These mixes are a combination of compost, perlite, and some type of water retention agent, either peat moss or coconut core. Now I personally advocate for those mixes with coconut core, which is ground up coconut husk, because not only is it more sustainable, but the research shows that coconut core is a better medium for container gardens. Now the number one question I get asked about soil in container gardens is how frequently should I change it? And as with most things related to gardening, the answer is, it depends. Because containers need watered so frequently, they tend to lose a lot of their nutrients much more quickly than a traditional in-ground garden. Now, during the season, this can be addressed by adding a top dressing of some type of natural amendment, bone meal, fish emulsion, even compost. But over the years, the soil will tire out and it just won't give you the same nutrients that your plants need. Also, due to the unique composition of container soil, it's gonna dramatically lose its volume. Now, there are several ways that you can contend with this issue, um, but I'm gonna share with you what I do to uh, overcome both the nutrient loss and the volume loss. I let my soil overwinter in my containers. Then, come springtime, I empty all of my containers into a big tub. This year, it's a giant cardboard box. I then buy one or two new bags of container mix, mix everything together, the new and the old, and then redistribute. What I find beneficial about this system is that it gives me an opportunity to sterilize my containers, which I do in a light bleach solution, and is really something you should try to do every year and should always do to any new container that you want to use. The other benefit is that it allows me to distribute the cost of replacing the soil. And so instead of having to buy large quantities every three to five years, which can get a little pricey, I instead just spend a little every year and I'm able to factor that expense into my annual garden plan. There are two exceptions to this method. The first is perennials. Because they come back year after year, I want to disturb the plants and more importantly their roots as little as possible and only when I have to. So for perennials, I repot them and give them brand new all fresh soil every couple of years. The other exception is if I have any pests or disease issues. If you have any type of pest or disease issues in your containers, do not, under any circumstance, use that soil again or mix it in with any soil for other containers. Pests and diseases can actually overwinter in the soil, which means that using it again not only is going to bring the problem back, but oftentimes the problem is going to be a lot worse than it was previously. So if you do happen to have a pest or disease issue in a container, dispose of all of that soil in a safe location, sterilize your container, and start fresh. The very last thing I want to mention about soil is that because soil is often the most expensive component to any container garden, if you're wanting to grow in a large container, a way that you can reduce cost is by adding material at the bottom of the container to fill up volume, like large stones, crushed aluminum cans. I personally use Easter eggs. If you do this, just make sure that there's at least one foot of soil depth so the roots have enough space to grow and there's still adequate drainage. Our last tenet is picking the right location. When picking the right location, the first thing to look for is 
how much sunlight your plant is going to need. Most vegetables fall into two categories in terms of sunlight requirement. They either need full sun, which is six to eight hours of sunlight a day, or partial sun, which is four to six hours. There are a few that can go either. This information is gonna be listed on the back of your seed packet, but I've also included a link in the description that you can use for general reference. If planting different crops in the same container, my recommendation would be to group them by sunlight requirement because this makes finding that perfect location just a little bit easier. Also remember that container gardens need frequent watering. So when you're trying to find your location, think about how you're gonna water them and make it easy on yourself by locating them next to your water source. The last thing to consider when thinking about the location for your container garden is the ongoing surroundings. Wind is a big concern for container gardens. Not only are they taller to catch the wind, but unlike in-ground gardens, containers can tip over, which can severely damage your plants. Either avoid those areas or add extra weight to the bottom with bricks or rocks to help. Then of course, as with any type of urban agriculture, we also have to consider the human element. I can't tell you how many people I know that have struggled with their container gardens because they didn't think about the human component of their location and that potential impacts. Something that I do to help combat this is I do an exercise in my mind where I think about the day in the life of my potential location. I think about how many people, how many animals interact with that location and think about any potential impacts that those animals and humans might have on the area. Now, sometimes things are unavoidable, but knowing and thinking about them ahead of time allows you to prepare for that and potentially minimize those impacts. And there we have it, the four tenets of container gardening. Now, as always, please look for my email down in the description and feel free to contact me with any follow-up questions. Thanks for tuning in and as always, grow healthy, grow sustainably, grow it yourself.